Hey yo, Hungry Heath here again, and today we're going to show you how we do our skillet pizza. I've been seeing lots of people making these on Facebook and Instagram and whatnot, and they are doing it actually in a skillet on the stove top. But I have that 36 inch Blackstone, so I just figured it'd be a lot easier to do it on that. And many moons ago, I used to work overnight what they call the early bird shift at Whataburger. It's one of the greatest burger joints in Houston. I mean, I'm sorry, in Texas. And they have several other states now, too, they've uh, expanded to. But even being on keto, I still go and eat there because it's just amazing. You can order a lot of stuff keto-friendly. But anyways, on that shift, uh, overnight shift I had to work, it was my responsibility partly to create their uh, breakfast items because they serve breakfast from 11 at night to 11 in the morning every single day. And what we used on the flat top that was similar to the Blackstone, I mean, it's just a regular diner style flat top cooking thing. We uh, had a, uh, sorry, a, um, a ring with a handle on it. And it basically looked like the skillet that had the bottom of it cut off. And then you would take a carton of the liquid eggs and pour it in there and that's how they made the scrambled eggs for everything. And if you wanted sausage in with it, they would just mix it all together. But anyways, I went to look it online to try and find one of those, and no luck. All I could find was those little rings for making uh, fried eggs. So I got to just ch shoot the uh, whatever, you know, chewing the fat with a buddy of mine, and he suggested we use the rings off of a spring form pan. And you know what? It worked out pretty darn good. So that's what we started doing now. And then I was looking for a big, wide spatula almost like a pizza pill. Well, we went looking on Amazon and found this is what they call a cake lifter for moving cakes from you know where you need it to go. And it works wonderful. It's a perfect size for using these. So let's get out to the laptop and let's get cooking. All right, folks, because of my mobility issues, it's gonna be a little easier for this video if Shelly shows you how to do it. So I'm just gonna film her I'll throw a little ad lib over the top of here uh, quotes for you. So let's get to cooking. Hey, so what I do to start off with, you will need some cheese. We like to start with cheddar as our base. I know some people do mozzarella, whatever cheese you want, uh, but cheddar's good. And then here's my spring form pan. So I've already got the blackstone heated and I've got both the pans. I do the side that has the little where it's um, Lip. lipped in, yes, thank you. And I also have it closed. And you'll see why after a bit, why you wanna start off with it closed and tight. So I never measure, because I've done this before with shredded cheese, like we're gonna do today, but you can do it with sliced cheese, any kind of cheese that you want. So I just go in with the hot black stone and I just start sprinkling this around. To make it a nice even crust. So I usually try to go like from the outside in and try to work fast because it, it starts melting really quick and get it just a nice little even layer here. Okay there's one done and then I'll start on the second one. Again, I always start from the outside and then work myself in. And on the intro, I was telling you all the equipment we're going to use. I forgot to mention that a pastry knife and a set of tongs will come in handy too. You'll see here in a second what we do with those. Okay, so this is as much cheese as you want. It is going to be cheese heavy because that's your crust. All right, and so it'll start melting. And then we'll let that sit for a minute. And once you see it's nice and melted, evenly melted, you can see we have a lot of grease built up from our bacon. Then you just start putting whatever toppings you want. Oh, well, what am I doing? All right, I'm sorry. So we've got mushrooms and pepperoni today. So we start with the mushrooms first because they have not been cooked. And we just start putting those in here. Now, however you want to top your pizza. And then, used to, Heath 
would put some tomato sauce or even tomato paste. I stopped doing it because it seemed like it made the pizza too soggy. And if I still want that sauce on there, I just do a little dipping sauce on the side, like a little small little bowl or something. All right, and then now the pepperoni. After that set there, you know, like a minute. And again, whatever toppings you want, you make this how you like your pizza. And I apologize for the camera angle moving around, folks. Uh, I'm sitting on a bench next to her using my uh, mini little uh, tripod trying to zoom in on all this. And usually this spring forward pan will keep it all in a nice circle. If it leaks out a little bit, like this one over here, um, you can't see it from that angle. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. We'll probably be editing a lot of this out. So, this one over here, it's not exactly a nice even one. So, it comes out a little bit on one side. That's fine. The majority of it will be kept in a nice circular motion. And I finally got up. My knees are popping on me. Right. And sometimes we've even done, like, ground beef on these. You just... Ground sausage. Yeah, just make sure it's already cooked. Okay. Canadian bacon. Pretty much any meat will work on this. It's mm -hmm. totally carnivore. As remember, carnivore, if it has a face, you can eat it. Then what we do when it's about done, so you see it's nice and crispy. She's shooing me off because I'm getting too close to the grill yeah. trying to film this for y'all. Okay, so when it's getting nice and melted, a little crispy you can finish off with a little bit of mozzarella on top just to kind of give it that nice little extra layer of cheese like a normal pizza would do you don't want it too heavy and you don't want to cover the whole thing what you're wanting to do is just have a nice even layer there to kind of give that effect of a topping of a cheese Okay, so now this is when you need your tongs and the frosting or pastry knife. You're, I use this because this is going to be hot and just slowly start lifting the spring form. And I just lift it slightly just to start pushing this down with the pastry knife. Just get in right at that corner. And also what you can do is snap that loose. And as you know, a spring four pan that will open it up a little, and that usually helps kind of release it as well. And just slowly, just I'm just barely lifting it. Yeah. It. And that's how you know that it's ready when it comes right off the spring form pan. And just put that to the side because again, it's going to be hot. Okay, and you can see how it's getting nice and crispy there. And then, see this one. Maybe you can also, if it's easier, that a grill to your right, a little gas grill, you can just toss them on there. Okay. Nothing will be out of your way. <laughs> they're gonna hurt nothing. And we just wait and pull them off later when they cool off. Yeah, that's all we're using the tongs for, just to grab those, just because it makes it a little easier. And then now we're using that pizza, I mean that uh, cake lifter. And then you're just going to get underneath, and you see how crispy that is. And you just have to sometimes slowly kind of work it in a circular motion to kind of release it. And just slowly push in, release it, and then see it's already starting to crust up. up. There. So... There we go, and it slides right on there. And then I go ahead and turn it off. Oh yeah, that's pizza. And there's your pizza. There nice you go, folks. Crispy. Now, so if you like a crispy crust, this is perfect. Now, of course, you can make it 
as crispy as you want or as soft as you want. Just the less time the cheese has to melt, it's going to be a little bit harder to get it off of here. I've done it before where uh, the cheese wasn't quite as brown like this is. And then it kind of sticks or pulls apart a little more. But to me, this is good. I love crispy thin crust. Like, think of like a Domino's thin crust. Mm -hmm. That's what this reminds me of. Oh, yeah. And it's burnt cheese. How can you go wrong with that? Yeah, we've always been a fan of burnt cheese anyways. And then there it is. That What did that take? Maybe five minutes to cook total? One cheese. So it's really fast, quick, and, and easy. So for a you know, weeknight when you're trying to make dinner, this is real quick. And we always do, you know, two, so we each get a personal pan. Um, of course, you can repeat for as many people as you have. And most people have springform pans. I have done it without a springform pan. Just realize the cheese might spread more. You see how this has a nice circular shape to it and that's the spring form pan kept it in that circular motion but you can do it without the form if you don't have one just you might have to like stand over it and kind of push the cheese back in to keep it in a round shape but those work perfect because most of them are about the size of a plate so it's like the perfect size for a pizza all righty let's get to eating that looks amazing. Brought it inside, put it on a cutting board so we can slice it up like a traditional pizza. And this is Shelly cutting it up. It's going to be a little tough because, you know, it's basically a giant cheese cracker. But I'm telling you folks, when it's done, it is amazing. And basically the toppings are pretty much endless. Whatever you want to put on your pizza. I mean, if it wasn't for the carbs and the sugar, I'd put some uh, pineapple on it, too. I used to love pineapple pizzas. But that's what we got going on. Give it a try and tell me what you think. Mmm. -hmm. So good. Now, I need y'all to do me a favor if you can, please. Remember to subscribe, like, and comment. Oh, and share it with your buddies, too. Let them know what's going on in the world of Hungry Heath. And down in the comment, I mean, I'm sorry, in the uh, show notes or whatever, the little description and everything, I'll leave a list of everything we use today, all the equipment. Y'all have a good one. So this is a new test recipe I'm working on. It's a pizza dip with cream cheese and uh, some shredded cheese and pepperonis. And I got these pork and good pizza flavored pork rinds that I'm going to use to eat it with. I will let y'all know later when I get this official video posted. Let's give it a try to this tester batch of the pizza dip. It's got cream cheese, pepperonis, and a little bit of shredded cheddar. And I got that on that pork and good pizza pork rind. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's money. I'm definitely going to have to make a full video on how we did all this. See you on the next one.